Hey guys, thanks for watching Precision Rifle Network. I'm Joel. So today I got a little care package from Brownells. We're gonna get this thing unboxed and put together and uh, see what it is. You guys excited? I know I am. I've never seen one of these yet in person, so uh, let's get going. That is the Magpul Pro 700 chassis. This should be fun. I've got a Remington 700 uh, 223 act barreled action that I'm gonna be putting into this. And uh, we're gonna be setting this thing up here today in this video and getting it all you know, ready to shoot and all that kind of stuff. And then I'm gonna break, that's gonna be part one. And then part two is gonna be out at the range uh, seeing what it does uh, on paper and downrange, uh, hopefully out to distance. So we've got the Remington Pro 700 chassis, the new one, and we've also got good folks over there at Brownells sent over this Steiner P4XI, and this is a 4 to 16 by 56. They also sent a set of uh, Burris XTR signature rings over, so we're going to use all these things, uh, again, provided by Brownells. Thank you guys very much for that. Appreciate it. And we're gonna get this thing put together. Put my knife away and shouldn't have. More tape, always more tape on these things, man. Man, that's a fancy box. I guess for packaging purposes, uh, Magpul gets a thumbs up from me on that. You know, it's the extra step they didn't have to go to, I guess. Wow, it's heavy. <clears throat> Actually quite a bit heavier than I thought it was going to be. We're going to have to weigh that and figure out how much that is, but uh, it seems really well built um, just right off the bat. Vertical grip. Length of pull adjustable by wheels, kind of like the, uh, you know, the Magpul PRS stock, but a little different. Comb height adjustable. Looks like we got a side folder here as well. Very cool. All right. I'm gonna bust out the Remington 700, get that taken apart and put into this chassis and tighten down and um, we'll get into this a little bit better. All right guys, so we've got the, uh, the new Magpul Pro uh, 700 chassis here and uh, I've got a, a Remington 700 barrel action. This is a really standard um, 223. Uh, I think it's an SPS, a Remington 700 SPS in um, 223, as you can see. And we're gonna try to put this uh, into the chassis. So let's go ahead and open this guy up here and see what else is in this bag. I forgot to do that before, so let's get that. So looks like we've got our Magpul P Mag here. It's like a five rounder. Looks like we've got another pistol grip in here for the chassis. This is more of a standard kind of a backwards cant to it as opposed to the straight up and down, which is on it now. So got that option sticker. Looks like various instruction manuals and that sort of thing. I'll leave the instruction manual out. I'm definitely not much of an instruction manual guy, but we're going to leave it out just in case I can't figure this guy out. So we've got that. Let's go ahead and get this guy kind of set in here now. I'm just using the action screws that they provided guys, two small ones actually, um, same exact length. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, torque these down to proper specs here. Yeah, that's about right. All right, here we are. Tons of space up in here. Um, very obviously free floated, man. There's a lot of room. 
It doesn't even touch at any point all the way back to the lug. Let's check to make sure it's unloaded, of course, before I pull the trigger. Everything seems to fit nice, so we're going to go ahead and go with that. Obviously, you know, with a short barrel 223 like this, this can be really beneficial for a law enforcement officer, somebody that needs, uh, you know, a nice compact package. Hole right here is going to fit right over the bolt there, the bolt knob as you close the, the gun up. So you could have a real nice short compact package. Um, I think that's pretty nice. Anyway, let's go ahead and sit that down and we'll bust out the scope. All right, guys, so this is the uh, Burris XTR Signature Rings. We're going to go ahead and get these open before we can build that the rest of that rifle up. So, kind of a nice little waterproof plastic hard case, like a Pelican case. I'm not quite sure why, but, you know, it's cool. It's good uh, fit and finish on it. I don't think there's anything else in there we need. Yeah, there is too. So these rings are a little bit unique in that they come with these kind of inserts, these um, plastic composite, whatever they are, inserts uh, to match different ring sizes. So it's kind of a um, you know universal system. And they say that you don't need to lap the rings because of it. So, um, you know, this is a 223 that we're going to be shooting. We probably won't get it out past 600 yards anyway. So I don't anticipate there being any issues. We're just going to figure out which ones of these we need and uh, get this thing mounted up to the scope and, and to the rifle next. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get the uh, Steiner Optic opened up here, unboxed as it were. So you've got to deal with instructions, battery for the lighted reticle. I have never handled a Steiner before. So this is a first for me. Seems really well built. Ooh, nice stiff turrets, man. That thing's gonna have to break in a bit. Does have a zero stop. Stops about four tenths, three to four tenths below zero. Seems pretty nice. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this uh, put into those Burris rings and, and get everything mounted up to the, the rifle properly here and leveled and I, I don't want to take all of your time so I'm not going to do that on camera. Um, you can look at one of my videos actually, I'll leave a link, should be uh, up at the top of the screen about how to properly bed uh, a scope or um, you know mount a scope into some rings if you want to check that out. But uh, we're going to go ahead and get this mounted up to the rifle and uh, see how she looks on there. Ugh, really Burris? two different sizes for the bottom halves for the top. All right, guys, finally got her all put together. Um, <clears throat> there are a few little things with these uh, little inserts on the, the, the rings. I, you know, I'm just going to say right off the bat, I'm not a fan of the little inserts on the, the little composite inserts here on the Burris rings. Um, if Burris wants to make rings, uh, they should just make them, you know, size specific. I'm sure they've, got reasons why that there's nothing wrong with that but to me you know I get them put in there and I have to fart around with those things make sure they're not sticking out the sides of the the, uh, the rings a little bit you know I, I try to twist them move the scope to get it centered my length of pull and everything my eye relief set right and I got to mess with those I I don't like an extra little step in there so I'm just gonna go ahead and throw that out there right now I'm not a fan of these particular Burris rings but that being said, everything else went, went together just fine. Um, the scope seems really nice, you know, for, uh, yeah, I've never handled a Steiner before. And so looking through it, the glass is nice. I'm going to give you some through the scope view on it um, when I can get out to the range. But, you know, the turrets seem really nice. The clicks are positive, audible. This elevation turret is uh, extremely stiff. It's going to have to loosen up a little bit which I think it probably will. Um, but you know, you don't want to move in too easily either. So uh, from, from just overall, you know, surface level, um, I'm liking this scope. Again, it's a four to 16 by 56. Lots of light coming into this guy. So for right now, at least what I can see, it's plenty bright. I mean, it's very bright optic. Um, I was impressed with that. Um, it's got a lighted reticle. And it does have, you know, it is a mill reticle, and I'll put that up on the screen for you to see. As far as the chassis goes, you know, just starting from the rear here, um, nice heavy pad uh, on the back of this guy. You know, I'm not quite sure 
why you'd need that. You know, the, the calibers that we're shooting don't recoil all that much, but it is nice. I mean, it's a nice feature to have. Um, coming forward to that, you know, you've got completely ambidextrous controls uh, on the stock back here. So, you know, for your length of pull wheel, uh, obviously can be accessed from either side. Um, your comb height can be adjusted from either side. Again, the hole in the middle here, I suppose it cuts weight, but it also works with the folder so that when you fold that thing closed, um, the bolt handle kind of sticks through the side of there. So that's kind of nice. You do have flush cups uh, on both sides for sling. And again, up here uh, on the back side of the rifle, let me flip this around. You've got another flush cup right up over here. I really would have liked to have seen a flush cup uh, attachment up on the front, but again, you could buy those uh, M-Lock accessories uh, from Magpul, I'm sure. Um, so there is that. Moving forward, it does have a vertical grip, and again, it comes with uh, a standard kind of rear cant uh, grip that you could change out if you, if you so desire. I like the vertical grip. Um, one thing that is nice, it does have a thumb shelf here. You know, a lot of precision shooters love to, to grab the grip here and, and rest the thumb along the, uh, the, the top side here. And so it does have that, that's nice. Again, it is a rear folder. So uh, just to have a nice compact, small package, um, that, is, that is a pretty nice feature. Uh, one thing I do like, uh, besides you know the overall weight of the chassis, it does add some weight to the gun. So I'm going to weigh this for you and you can kind of get an idea, but um, uh, in Precision Rifle we, we clearly want a heavier overall rifle setup, uh, help mitigate recoil and all that sort of thing. Yeah, it's not going to matter much on this 223, but it does help. So that's nice. One thing I do like um, about this barrel channel up here is that at no point does the barrel touch. Um, it's got a lot of room, it's completely free floated, obviously what we want, we don't want anything touching that barrel uh, all the way back to the recoil lug and no, no part of it touches in here. The only thing that touches is the recoil lug and then where the action screws go in. So no complaints there and I, I, I imagine that'll um, you know, add to the accuracy. I think this is going to be a nice package, guys. I'm really looking forward to uh, getting out and shooting it, and I'll give you some more details out on the range and how it did and give you some results and uh, look through the scope and, and all those things uh, in the next episode. So thanks for watching the unboxing and the, uh, the install of all the parts here. Again, special thanks to Brownells for sending over all the, uh, the tidbits here. I really appreciate that, guys. Thanks for, for hooking me up there. And uh, tune in again soon, guys, for another great video from Precision Rifle Network.